What is going on guys? This is Jay Kraft with the Facebook group Bolarama Pickers Lounge and we are here tonight for our Thursday reseller roundup. We're going to be here for quite a little while as I've got some amazing items I'm going to be showcasing for you guys tonight. And I want to start off by saying, look around me. Look at this. We have a, you know, a little green screen action going on. But we have a lot of stuff that we're going to be covering so we can't talk about that for too, too long. Uh, so much going on. With the pickups this week, I got some amazing items, and dare I say, possibly one of the rarest items that I've gotten over the last year or so. On top of that, we're going to be talking about why certain Amazon sellers are finally choosing to leave the platform, and it's not for the reason you might think. Um, on top of that, I have some goodies that we're going to give in away tonight. Some of our friends over at Jaybird have sent us over some items. They're kind of hard to see because of the green screen in the background, but they sent us some shirts. Look at this one. Look how nice this is. It says, run like you stole it. We got some stickers. We're going to be talking a little bit later about their product and how it might actually be able to be beneficial for your business. Uh, on top of that, uh, I'm going to be talking a little bit about some of the items that we talked about last week, some of the successes and some of the failures. We kind of got to touch base on them a little bit. And we're also going to be talking about eBay's new plan to try and stay relevant in this day and age with their augmented shopping program that they have coming out here uh, over the next week or two. So thank you so much all of you for being here this evening. Looks like we got about a half a dozen of you in so far. If you know anyone looking to get some help on their eBay or Amazon brand, send them this direction. You can share the link above, but the entire video will be available afterwards. So if you do have to go and come back, you'll be able to catch the pieces that you missed. So I do want to let you all know that this is a Patreon funded program. I want to say thank you so much to the patrons who did make this program possible. If you're curious about Patreon, you're wondering what the perks are, we have some all new stuff that's going to be rolling out over the next week. We're going to be uh, adding some bonus features for the existing members, and we're going to kind of be revamping the page. Uh, there's certain things like the Pickers podcast that we're not doing anymore. Hey, thanks, Juan, for that uh, for that comment. I have a I have a second screen over here to the side to where I can actually read my comments. But yeah, so we're not doing the uh, the Pickers podcast uh, thing so much. I would love to be able to do more of that, but we're going to be moving more into a format of uh, live production where we can actually be able to answer your questions right away. So it's not like before where you heard something, you were taught something, and maybe you had some details and you had to post a comment and wait a few days for your answers. We want to get those answers to you right away. So there, there's a ton of stuff that we're going to be going over. But like I said, thank you so much to the patrons. And I want to give a special shout out to Rachel, who was there by my side over this last week as we tried to figure out all of the things necessary to make this new show possible. So uh, I'm going to touch base on it just a little bit later, but I kind of want to get into the nit of grit of why we're here tonight, and that's to see some of the cool things that I picked up. Uh, we're going to start with some of the more basic items, and we're going to be rolling in to some of the better stuff. And one, we can do a Pickers podcast, but I would want to do a live one. And I certainly have the tech and the know-how to be able to pull that off now. So if that's something you want to be a part of, let me know. But if not, we're looking to get some guests on the show. So we're going to be doing some live phone-in guests, whether it be through Google Duo or FaceTime or Skype or something like that. We'd love to get some guests on here to be able to talk to uh, everyone about, you know, I guess regional picking type stuff. Each area is a little bit different. Sometimes people see my hauls and they say, Jay, like, how are you getting so much good stuff? It's because you live in California. And I, most times I tell them, like, you know, yeah, sometimes you get a little bit lucky at the stores, but... 
what you don't see is all the stores I go to and I leave empty handed from. So without further ado, let's get into some of those items. And I do want to let you know at any time, if you have questions, you can drop them in the comments below. Okay, and I'll, I will get to them as soon as I have a break point and we'll be able to cover them. So I, I have bins and everything's still in its bags, okay? Uh, also, forgive the artifacting. You're going to see a little bit of like green bits coming up onto the chair and that's because the it's trying to trying to process and stream all at the same time. So I've got first bag here. I, was, I went to the swap meet down the way from me and I don't generally go to swap meets but I'm trying to get back into my cycle again and uh, that's one of the things I've been talking about uh, in the group chat uh, for Patreon is that I'm trying to scale things back up. I took time off so that I could start on the coupon book and I'm, you know, the, the numbers aren't fantastic with the coupon book. I'm pretty sure I'm going to break even at this point, but I'm happy I did it. But I'm at a point where my eBay store had probably 12 to 1300 items before and now it went all the way down to where it had under 500 and I'm scaling it back up again. I'm trying to get it up over a thousand again, but I'm also putting a heavier emphasis on Amazon too. So these are very, very cool. We got a Batman and we got a Robin <sighs> model kits. So when it comes to these, obviously they're not in their shrink wrap, okay? But they're very, very nice. Um, they have a little bit of a little bit of that crushing going on. But believe it or not, I'm going to send these into Amazon new. And I know some people out there are like, oh my god, you can't do that. You can't send it in new. I do it all the time. I understand the risk. Yeah, there's going to be some risk. Everything inside the bag is complete in there. And then even underneath, we have the manual and the decal pack. Um, the little accessories that come with it. That's actually a metal battering right there. So I bought these at the swap meet. The guy, uh, and I'm going to be showing a few more models here in a second that go along with these. The guy said he wanted uh, 25 for three of them or he'd sell me four for 30. So I went ahead and took the four even though one of the margins was a little bit smaller. Uh, so these actually sell for about $80 to $90 a piece on Amazon. So these are going to be a very quick turnaround. I'm going to throw them inside of a giant poly and then ship them on out. Um, yep, there you go. Uh, Juan, I, yeah, that's, that's exactly it. I haven't had any issues with stuff coming back, so I'm just going to kind of keep it up at that method. But we are going to be talking about Amazon. There, there's a big talk to be had about Amazon, and I might even interject in between the items if people don't have any preference. Um, but yeah, there's a lot going on with Amazon right now. Uh, this next one here is a, a game, Smart A Asterisk Asterisk. Um, yeah, so this is a, just a, a basic board game. It was actually originally from TJ Maxx and marked down. I got this at the swap meet. I paid $3 on this one. And then we have this one, uh, Dexcape Test Time. I really like this new setup because I can actually read the stuff in the screen. It's facing the same direction. But I got these two here. I think I paid $3 for the pair. We're looking at $12.99. $12.99 on Amazon for this one. I think this one might be an eBay play. I remember it being around 15 bucks, could be more. Actually, you know what? Hey guys, I'm gonna show you something really cool. This is how cool the technology is now for these streams. I'm actually able to go like this. Nope, 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 that wasn't it. Okay, here, we can go like this. Look at that, now I'm inside of an eBay search window. So we're gonna look this one up really quick while I have you guys, okay? Look at technology. Who's blown away? Because I'm blown away. This little bit right here, this took about three hours of work to figure out how to do. So you can do it in real time. Okay, so we're looking at uh, the cheapest one right now. Um, I don't know what SW means, but yeah, we're looking at $12.95. Maybe I had an Amazon play for this one. Not really positive, but yeah. So that's a, that's a thing we can do now. So if you have any items that you're... I know, Caroline, it's amazing. So if you have any um, um, questions about specific items, we can actually look them up right now. Here, I'm going to adjust the screen up a little bit. But yeah, we can actually look them up in real time now and get you accurate answers and appraisals on these items. So this might have been an Amazon play. There's a possibility it's scanned in higher for Amazon. So we're going to get those out of the way. That's one bag down. Guys, we got so much cool stuff. I cannot tell you how excited I am about the last item that I'm going to be showing today. It is, it's something that I even looked up on Google, Google Images. I've asked people, we cannot find a comp for this item. And I know just how rare it is, but we're going to get to it. Trust me. Okay, so up next, I got some plushies. I didn't even realize that these were in here. This is a, a Zoom Zoom plushie. I'm not sure which character this is, to be completely honest with you, uh, but I picked it up at Goodwill for $1.50. I have no clue what it's worth, but I sold a similar Zoom Zoom of this same size. It was Pluto. I got almost $30 for it, so I'm thinking even if it's uh, half that amount, it's not going to be bad. 
Man, that chiseled jawline. Juan, I'm working on it. We're, I'm thinking about having a little after stream, and I might be sticking around, having a little after party, and talk with people about what's going on in my life. But, uh, man, you got to go rock climbing. I'm telling you, it's an absolute blast. And then I got this Build-A-Bear. I was hoping that there might be somebody on who knows Build-A-Bear, but the store that I went to, uh, everything in that store is $1.50. So I had no problem pulling the trigger on this. And the reason I did, um, well, like I said before, I have a friend who's a child more than happy to get free Build-A-Bears from me. But I noticed that the tag was a particularly old style. And then I even noticed that the shirt was a very, very old style as well. This was like way before the days of when they had uh, fancy graphics and stuff going on too. So I don't know what it's worth. I don't know. Um, maybe we can get a year off. Maybe we can find out in real time together. It looks like it's from 1997. Yeah, let's find out. Let's, let's, let's do this together. Let's see what we can do here. 1997, build a bear cat. Oh my God, why, why is it so, how do you sell this for $3.99? This must have a fortune of shipping on it or something. Oh, okay, 10.79 shipping. Okay, so we're looking at about a $14, $15 bear. Uh, the last listing looks like it over here is $13.16. Yeah, not, nothing to write home about, but it's certainly, uh, Certainly something, okay. Okay, oh. and then for a dollar fifty, yeah, doesn't really matter too bad. Let's see what else we got. I picked this up. This is a uh, this is Peckle. He's a Sanrio character. So if you think of like Bad Samaru and you think of Hello Kitty, this is another uh, character along that line. This appears to be a lunch bag. And uh, people who like Sanrio really like Sanrio. And the people who like specific characters really like their specific characters. I got this uh, for, I think they charged me $1.50. It was a different store, but they charged me $1.50 on this. I'm thinking that I'm going to be able to get $15, $20 bucks for it. You know, a lot of little smalls here and there. Uh, I got this, supposed to be a two-pack of HEPA filter type Bs. These are really, really expensive, these name brand ones. I think they're about $30 or $40 a piece. My air purifier that I use myself, and if you don't have an air purifier and you wake up blowing your nose every morning, buy an air purifier. It'll change your life forever. But they take these filters and they're like $30, $40 a pop. This box only had one inside of it, but believe it or not, I have sold singles on eBay, OEM filters, for $30 on there for this exact variety, which is probably what I'm gonna do. The reason why they're so expensive is because they last for about a year and a half running full time, running around the clock. Yes, I love that old school shirt on the cat. I mean, maybe the shirt's worth something. I don't know. Let's find out real quick. So what do you guys think of the uh, the new technology, the new stuff that we got going on right now? Build a bear. What's it say? What did it say? Number one pal? Okay, let's find out. Number one pal. Those filters are a great fun. Yeah, they're, they're dang expensive. Okay, so I'm not seeing anything active. So that's the first thing you do. You check your active. We're going to be checking completed now. Love the new tech. Thank you so much, Carolee. Okay, so I'm not finding the shirt. I mean, who knows? It, it might be worth a tenner. It might be worth a little bit more. I'm not 100% positive. But we'll, we'll definitely, if anyone knows, we'll, we'll, you know, group chat knows, we'll figure it out. So this next item, this was a, a little quirky one. I was... I wasn't surprised it was worth money, but I was surprised that I kind of stumbled across it. It's an Oscar Mayer wiener holder. Uh, you put your hot dogs and buns together and yeah, you can, it's a little serving tray and has hot dog handles. It's super cute. Uh, I scanned it into Amazon and we're looking at about a $20 bill on this. So no complaints. It doesn't really weigh anything either. So nice, easy find. I paid uh, $1.50 on that and it still has the original cardboard over it. So that's going in as new. Thank you, Georgia. I really appreciate that. Okay, and then next item up, we've got a audiobook. These are something that I don't know if I've talked too much about it on stream before, but these are really great things to scan. And usually when you see one, you're going to see more than one. It's kind of the same situation in the same way that I treat puzzles, in the sense that if it's brand new and sealed, it's kind of worth my time and attention. So certainly scan these in when you see them. This one right here, I believe, is worth about $18. I was with Daniel at the time he got them, and I got this one because I was able to help facilitate about a 70% discount off at that store because the girl who works there really thinks I'm cute, and I told him I'm taking this as a buyer's premium uh, <laughs> to, to help you get that deal. So they do range. They get very high. I've sold a handful for anywhere from $40 to $50. 
so definitely scan these when you see them. Uh, what else do we got? Uh, so we got the rest of the models that I was talking about. Uh, we've got this Batman one. This was the cheaper of the ones that I picked up, but I picked it up because or maybe it was this one. One of these was worth 30. One of these was worth 20. Oh my God. Sorry, I had a bag that was fighting me. So this is the other one. These, these ones are actually in the shrink. So definitely send these ones in as new to Amazon. And honestly, with the other ones, if I ran them through a shrink machine, I totally could do that. But I'm going to shove them inside of a clear poly bag and then send them on out. So nice models. You already know the story behind them. Okay, what else do we got? And now I've got, I've got a ton of figures. Uh, I don't know the best way to show all of these. I think I'm just going to put them up here. So we've got, uh, we got a Tomb Raider one. These were all bought at one time. So I'm just going to kind of pass through and show them all to you. They're, they're not inherently special or anything. We got a Spawn figure. We got this Wildcats figure. These are all going to Amazon, every single one of them. Some of them are in a little bit of rougher shape than the other ones, but they're, they're still technically new to me. A couple more figures. This one's a little bit bigger, so it's certainly an Amazon play. And then these are the last two. I bought all of these figures at one time. I paid thirty dollars for all of them. Again, at the swap meet, I was really surprised with the amount of quality goods that I found out there. Uh, if you guys have a swap meet in your area, I strongly encourage you to go check it out. I mean, they got really nice stuff out there. Um, yeah, yeah, hit a few of them even if you can on a Sunday. We actually hit two this last Sunday, and that's part of why I was able to get so much stuff. Uh, but yeah, I paid thirty for those figures. Probably going to get about. 100 to 150 after fees and shipping and all that stuff. So definitely look into figures. And then I got this other one. This one's actually falling apart. I bought it falling apart, okay? We actually have the Sleepy Hollow Ichabod Crane figure. Really nice figure. It's one of those ultra detailed, high quality ones. Uh, this, even in this condition, even separated from the blister, I believe I'm gonna get 25 bucks for it. I know the ones that are in pristine condition are like 35 to 40 right now. So. Yeah, even if you see something open pack like that, but it's a high-end figure, certainly look and see how much they're going for. Uh, what do we have next? Oh, when I was working with those models, too, I asked the guy, because there's a thing that's, you know, after a deal is done, sometimes you can ask for a toss-in. Uh, once you've spent enough money with somebody, if you see something that catches your eye, it doesn't hurt to try. So I bought all the the uh, the figures and like we settled on a price but it was actually his price not my price i was trying to get him for 25 and he's like well would you do 30 i'm like yeah sure whatever i'll do 30 bucks for you I paid him his money and then as i was leaving i saw a nice oem apple block you always want to check the back uh some of them will say apple with bees and those are the fake ones from japan but these things are just nice to have they have good high output you can never have enough of these blocks and i'm like hey you mind tossing that block in for me um, let me get that just because we did some business he's like yeah sure go ahead so next time you're buying something at a swap meet, I want you to try and get something thrown in on top. Uh, and then we got this little Pokemon book. These, uh, it only has one card in there. I don't care about the cards. These albums go for about 15 bucks. These are from the like the retro era. Um, actually, this one's not. This one's from 2015. Maybe I'll get a. You know, let's find out. I thought it was of the retro era, and it's one of those you know worst case scenarios. I can throw it into the shop, but let's see what it's going for. 2015 Pikachu card holder. Hmm. So no completed. Hmm. Anyone got ideas on search terms that we could use? Pikachu card. Let's, let's try this. Pikachu card holder. Oh god. So we got oh shit. We got some similars. But nothing identical yet. Let's do our refinement. Price plus shipping lowest first. Buy it now format. And we got a lot of international stuff too. Deck boxes. Well, if you guys hear the, uh, the fan on my computer getting really loud, you know why. Okay, here it is right here. Uh, looks like it's 1167. This is probably going to go inside the shop. But I got this for 50 cents, I believe. So I can't complain. Okay. Oh. Dun, 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 dun. So I got some more figures. I didn't 
didn't realize I had gotten this many figures, but these ones are a little bit different. Apparently, I broke the plastic on this either just right now or at some point while I was getting home. And then I got this big one as well. Aren't these guys adorable? Look at this. A little Choco Minty Bear, Bossy Bear, and then a tiny, tiny Choco Minty. Okay, we don't need to leave these up here too long. Uh, I got all of those together for... Ten dollars, I believe. The big one goes for about sixty on Amazon. The two smaller ones go for about fifteen to twenty a piece. Real basic stuff. Okay, I actually have an item here that I did not look up because I got it so darn cheap while I was there. It's one of those uh, field phones, I believe, is what it is. It's Motorola brand. The guy didn't have a charger with it, uh, which would have been nice. And I don't see a hyper visible model number, but if we have one, we're certainly going to look it up right now. Um, it has some type of laser scanning functionality on the back. Oh boy. Okay, this is actually going to be a little bit of a mission because there is not a model number on this. And it has a okay. It has a barcode scanner on the back, on in two plate and a camera. Anyone have an idea what we would call this? I thought it was a like a field phone, but it also has scanners on it. Maybe, uh, you, oh, you know what? It's got a uh, torque security screws over the battery plate. I will get to that on the next stream. I'm going to pop it open. I'll get back to you with some info as to uh, what it's worth because we're not going to be able to get the model number right now. But at $3, I expect even parts not working. We're going to get somewhere between 40 and 50 bucks for it. Oh boy, do I have more diskettes? These. Are you guys buying these? Because I remember that I posted up a picture about four or five months ago showing a massive package of colored diskettes uh, that I picked up at the uh, Goodwill down the street. I paid $10 for it and it just sold two weeks ago for $168 on Amazon. Big bucks. These little packets of diskettes, Maxell brand, these are worth $30 a piece on Amazon and I got them for two for a dollar I think. And, you know, I, it, it took maybe about 15 minutes of rummaging because I found one and the lady's like, yeah, I think there's another one inside of there. And so I ended up digging through all these cords and everything and I found another one. So that's just easy money right there. And then while I was going through that bit, I found a Xbox 360 power supply. These kind of vary as well. You definitely want to look at them. The ones that have the two, see, the, I don't know if you can see this or not. It's really hard to get. See those two prongs right there? Those are the ones you don't want, okay? Uh, because of the way that the consoles are designed, only certain ones can take this one. The ones that have a smooth groove the whole way through are universal. They're worth a little bit more. These aren't worth a ton, maybe 12 or 15 bucks on eBay, but she sold it to me for a dollar as well. And I can, like I said, I can always toss it into the shop, so it's not too, too big of a deal. Are you guys learning anything yet? I see the comments are going awfully quiet right now. I wanna, I wanna make sure I'm not losing you guys. Oh, we got another one. Another cool item. I hate to say it, it is video game related again. I really wish I could show you a little more diversity, but actually that's the diversity right there. So we got these Atari controllers. Okay, so there is something to be learned here. Uh, there's actually three different types of Atari controllers. A lot of people don't know this, okay? We have the ones that say paddle on them, the ones that say driving on them, okay? And then there's a third variety that says Atari on them. So these driving and these uh, these paddle ones range anywhere from $15 to $22 for a pair. They actually come, some of them come two to a single cord. So if you see this right here, um, this is the adapter and there's actually two cables coming out of it. So they come two to a cord and they're about 20 bucks, give or take. Sometimes people run them down, sometimes they run high because there's a limited stock. But if you find the ones that actually say Atari on them and they're the spinning, uh, paddle ones, those go for closer to $45 or $50. A huge difference in pricing. I have made the mistake personally of listing one incorrectly in the past and lost about $20 on it, but I learned my lesson, so I'm saving you the trouble and helping you learn your lesson as well. Oh yeah, yeah, no, that rattle, I use that rattle to my advantage. You can, yeah, I use that rattle to my advantage to get myself a little bit of a discount as well. So you can do that. Uh, but yeah, I, I may open it and take it out. I may not. And I know what you're thinking too. You're like, Jay, how are you going to test those controllers? I'm not. I'm really not. Um, I've bought, God, 30, 40, 50 of them. I've only had one complaint 
out of all the ones that I've sold. Now, obviously, like some people are hypersensitive and worried about their seller account. I totally respect that. They don't want defects. They don't want negative feedback. But certain things, I'm just, I'm not going to pull out an Atari, hook it up to an old school TV, find a copy of Grand Prix, and then slam those controllers in and test them. It is not going to happen. And I know what you're thinking, like, well, are you going to put that there tested in the listing? Yes. Because when you buy that item for a dollar or two dollars and it just doesn't work and you have to eat it, I would rather eat it, the, the shipping cost out and the origin two dollars and tell them to throw it away than do all of that work. I'd rather just lose five dollars. I'd rather have somebody just take five dollars out of my pocket than go through all the work of testing that. Now, if you are one of those people that is super, uh, super concerned about your account, what you want to do is you just want to wait until you have a ton of that stuff. You want to wait till you have like 40 good Atari games and then 40 controllers and then maybe like 10 consoles that you want to test. The old woody Atari consoles are going for about 50, 60 bucks now. So they're finally becoming like relevant and worth picking up while you're out thrifting. Um, but yeah, just test everything all in, all in bulk. Okay, <clears throat> I'm going to take a real brief intermission because like I said, we have some giveaway items that we're going to be doing right now. And I want to talk to you about Jaybird. Jaybird is the makers of these fantastic X3 headphones. I've been using these for the last, oh God, six months now. You can remember when I was doing my a Walk With Jay videos um, that lasted maybe about a week or so. And I promise you, this show is going to last much longer. We're going we to ride this show for, for years. We're going to run this straight into the ground until it's just not even worth watching anymore. But when I was doing my A Walk With Jay videos and I was talking about my life as a reseller and other personal things that were going on in my life, I was using these headphones to go on my walks. Um, I was using these to pick up some of the audio. Um, uh, and I use them here around the house as well. So why are having good headphones important for business? Because people have asked before and they say, well, how do I get around using my cell phone or how do I get around using scanners? And a lot of people will use an earbud to be able to get audio information from their phone or from their scanners. There is settings and ways to do that, third-party apps and different things. So having these can be beneficial, and if you're like me and you care about fitness, these things are absolutely amazing. They start around 70 bucks, depending on the color you wanna get. These red ones ran me about 130, but I'll tell you when it comes to Bluetooth, wireless earbuds, you're not gonna find anything better. So we have a ton of items that they sent us. Like I said, we got this really awesome, run like you stole it shirt. Juan, I know you got your eyes on this one. They sent us a whole bunch of decals, and these aren't going to show up the correct color. These are actually green, but they're the same color green as my green screen, so that's why they look blue. Um, and then they sent us sent us some water bottles and uh, a whole bunch more decals. We got uh, these kind, these kind. We got some of the clear kind, and we're going to be giving away to two separate people. Okay, um, some of these decals. We're going to be giving away to two separate people. We're going to split some of this stuff up. Um, all you have to do is after this video is done, it's going to get uploaded to Patreon, okay? We're going to upload the whole thing to the Patreon page. All you have to do is drop a comment over there. Say, hey, I saw the stream, wanted to leave a comment on Patreon. And we're just going to pick two people and we're going to send them a bunch of stuff. That's about it. If you want more information on these headphones, let me know. I'll get you some links and stuff like that. So back to the items. And thank you again to Jaybird for sending out those fantastic items to us. We have another voice recorder. So last time we were on, I talked with you guys about a different voice recorder. I'm going to show you the completed sale on that one right now. Um, so let's go my eBay. We're going to go to, oh God, how do you, selling? So you guys are going to see a little bit of my back page right now. Okay, I'm, I'm always transparent about my numbers and everything. I have nothing to hide when it comes to that. Um, where is my sold stuff? I hate when they rearrange this. Um, it's so hard to find what you're looking for. Uh, oh God, somebody help me out. Help, somebody help me find my sold stuff. Active, scheduled, unsold. Why do they make this so difficult? Sold. Why is that so hard? I love, I lo oh my God. Okay, I'm gonna have a I'm gonna have a temporary code fired out to my phone really quick. Don't mind me. This is oh okay. Well, I guess I'm in anyways. Ended listings, unsold. This isn't even my sold stuff. Top right, see all orders. My eBay here. Let's go to summary page. 
Okay. The reason this is uh, uh, giving me so much trouble is because I'm used to using it on uh, my other computer and not a MacBook. Rachel, help me out here. Oh, I think you have to click on it. Hard click on it. Oh my gosh. There it is. See all orders. Who misses the classic view? I miss the classic view. Okay, so we're going to pull up some of the things that I sold recently. This isn't even it either. Right above my head. <laughs> okay, whatever. We're going to get back to it. We're going to get back to it later. I'll figure it out, okay? So um, I, I sold a, or we showcased a different recorder recently it was a VOR one as well I believe and I showed it here on the show and it sold for forty dollars over the last week uh, this is another one that we have right here it's a Sony clear voice I didn't I, I think this one's like 18 bucks 20 bucks this is what I was telling you about about how there is a range on them uh, but yeah another of the this is the bigger one it takes the full size cassettes people like the smaller ones as well right above your head that was it how did I miss this Rachel help me out here how, how am I how am I missing something so simple as finding my sold items on this dang page? See, they switched the view because this, this is the new one. This isn't the same as the uh, the classic view. My old computer or my other computer is set up with the uh, the classic view, so it makes it a little bit easier to find everything. So we got a waiting shipment. See, that's usually where right where I go to it. I just go to a waiting shipment and I get ready to fire stuff out. Should be in your orders. Is it this one? No, this is, a, this is an old, old one. All orders. Let's just go last this month. Sorted by date sold. Okay, here we go. So I'm going to be showcasing some of the items. I, I finally got it. Thank you, Rachel. Uh, so this is one that we showcased last week. This was that uh, Boba Fett bear. This is the one that I picked up for, I think I paid a premium. I think I paid like six bucks for it. This one sold for $30. Um, what else did we have that was actually on the show last week? We had the, this is one of the items that I wanted to give you guys an update about. This is the Quest Study Bible. Um, I thought I was going to get a lot more for it, uh, but the trending numbers for a used one were at $19.99. Um, I still turned a profit on it, obviously, but it just didn't go for as much as I was hoping. And then this was the micro cassette recorder that I showed last week. This is the M727V micro cassette. This one sold for 40 bucks, so that's not bad. Okay, and then what else did we have from last week as well? This item too. So this came from last week too. This is a, a, a thing of uh, white out tape or black, black print on white tape. This sold for 14 bucks. So these are all the items that I sold from last week's show. Okay, oh, let's get back to the hiccups. What else do we got? I got three more items here, okay? I got this for the shop. I paid a buck for it. You know, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll get maybe five bucks in the shop. Now I got a really oddball one. This is another item that I was not able to get a comp on, and I tried really hard to. Uh, Oh, you know what? I think I was reading that as a B for some reason. So we got maybe B or 3 RTN. Oh, no, that's why I read it as a B, because it says B right there. So I tried finding these gloves. If anyone can find these gloves, it would be much appreciated. Um, and I bought them because they were super unique. This one has a little bit of damage on it, as you can see. And then the other reason I bought it is because the MSRP on it was listed at $79.95. So I know that they're somewhat high-end and they're somewhat oddball looking. I have no clue what I'm going to get for them. I could not find a comp on these. But at the price I got them for, can't really hurt. Okay, guys. We don't have many people watching, but those who are watching, you're going to get to see some really cool stuff, okay? This is easily one of the oddest and coolest items that I've had in a very, very long time. Rachel, because she was helping me out, had the privilege of getting to see this item early. 
Okay. Hope you guys are ready for this. This is really, really nutty. Look at this. Look how cool this is. This is a mini tray of Fanta bottles. Okay, these bottles are tiny, tiny, tiny. Look, look at how small this is. Use me for scale. Look how small this is. Okay, so the Fanta bottles, these aren't a huge deal. Okay, you can go online, you can buy a few of these, no problem, but they are worth money. They range anywhere from 10 for a completely empty bottle up to about $22 for one that's like full or near full. Okay, but the big money, the really rare thing, is this tray right here. This tray is incredibly rare. Yeah, thanks, Carly. Yeah, this this tray, me and Rachel probably spent the better part of about 15 plus minutes trying to find a comp on this tray, okay? We couldn't find one. We found other minis that were like Coca-Cola, uh, but we could not find this Fanta tray. And as far as I can tell, just based on the, the metal work and everything, because obviously the bottles say Fanta, but this isn't some type of reproduction. This isn't a repaint that somebody did themselves. This is an original piece. So I believe that this was possibly used as a store display. Like not many stores may have gotten it. Maybe some of the stores that were higher volume. Juan, that's a good guess, but we're going to be going higher than that. Um, Juan just said $199.99. So as I said, these bottles alone are worth $10 to $20 a piece. So we got 18 of these here. So even if we say on the low end, we're looking at about $180, but on the high end, we're looking at about $360. Now when you add this tray in, I, honest to God, believe this tray is worth at least $300. And I know that sounds maddening, but when you have something that, for all intents and purposes, is one of one available within the world, you really do have to set the pace. So for an all-in-all -all total pricing, I'm probably going to be asking $499.99 on something like this, and I'm going to make sure it never, ever goes on sale. Look how cool this is. Isn't this nifty? And these are all glass, too. Yeah, and they, they range in color, they range in fullness, okay? I think every single one of them should have at least something inside of them. Have you guys ever seen anything like this? Anything just so interesting and different? So, you're probably wondering, how much did you pay, Jay? How'd you get it? I was actually at the swap meet, and the guy had it there, and he I asked him, how much do you want? He said, 50 bucks. And I did a little bit of negotiating, couldn't do a whole lot, but I was able to secure it for $40. So 40 bucks in, and I'm really, truly believing I'm going to get 500 out. So the best way to go about actually getting this thing sold is we are going to start with an auction with an opening bid of 500. I'm going to pay my money, possibly lose the fees on it unless we gain some traction. If it fails to sell at 500 at auction, I'm going to flip it around and we're going to do 500 as the ask price. If it fails to get that, then six months from now, we'll add an OBO um, option on it. But certainly something that's probably going to have to simmer for a little bit. But who knows? I mean, I mean, I've had some real oddball items that I thought were going to take a long time to sell. And then somebody just jumped in and got them. So uh, we are going to be transitioning into our next segment. If anyone has any questions, as always, like I said, throw them up in the comment section. Um, but if not, we are going to be talking right now about why... Amazon members are starting to leave Amazon. I don't know if you guys saw the popular video that's going around some of the thrifting communities right now. There's a gentleman who's been a longtime Amazon seller. He has a massive warehouse, a huge, huge warehouse. It's the size of a football field. He's got his inventory stacked three shelves high inside of this massive warehouse, okay? And I had the opportunity to uh, watch through that video and I even took some notes. Um, regarding it because I found the whole thing to just be absolutely nutty what's going on with him. He's experiencing a lot of the uh, same issues that I'm experiencing when I'm trying to do work with Amazon. And my ultimate plan was to move a bunch of my e inventory from eBay to Amazon as I get ready for a move towards the end of this year. So that being said, I wanted to kind of touch base on some of the problems that he had and I guess maybe what we could possibly do to try and make things better for ourselves. But we're, we're seeing again I talked about this six months ago, maybe even a year ago, about a dynamic shift that was happening between eBay and Amazon. Amazon was becoming like a titan, becoming the powerhouse, and eBay was striving to stay relevant. Well, right now, you know, Amazon, obviously one of the four four horsemen as far as, you know, the financial world is concerned. I mean, they're absolutely crushing it. They're getting huge tax breaks from different towns just to open up warehouses. I mean, they're making the money hand over fist. But with this growth, they're having a lot of problems being able to actually uh, keep everything in place to be able to make sure that as a scale that the consumers stay happy as well. 
So it's it's one of those problems, just like eBay had in the past when eBay went through and they removed the power of the seller to be able to leave negative feedback for the buyer. Because it's, it's much easier for Amazon as a company to acquire buyers than it is to acquire sellers. So it, it's a very interesting dynamic. So some of the problems that he was having is that he was using migration tools to move items from eBay to put them on Amazon or to be able to do like a multi-channel or a multi-list. You can use a third-party piece of software where you enter in all the information and it goes ahead and lists it to both sites. Okay, the benefit of it is obviously you're going to get more exposure. But the reality is most of your items are going to sell on Amazon because of the price differential. When you're competing on Amazon, you're competing at a higher price than where you're at on eBay, where you're generally competing at a lower price. An item on Amazon that's maybe $35 might be anywhere from $25 to $28 on eBay. So this gentleman was having issues getting his, uh, his items to go across. And on top of that, he was having a lot of cataloging issues. I've had cataloging issues myself. Um, for those of you who don't know, eBay or Amazon has a massive catalog that they use that contains like UPCs, stock photos, stock descriptions on a lot of their items that they have up for sale. We're talking somewhere in the area of about 90% of the items, uh, and it's pretty much everything except for private label items, stuff that people are making themselves. Okay, so the problem with this is when you have a seller like this gentleman who has very specific items, you know, he might be selling uh, just the the rubber off of a pair of Jaybirds or just the wingtips off a pair of Jaybirds, okay? And when he goes and he multi-lists it, he gets it up on eBay or he's migrating it from eBay to Amazon, what happens is when it gets to Amazon is it may show the entire product or it may show these two pieces together. And the problem with that is that he's having issues with customers getting something under a certain expectation and then when the item arrives they're getting something completely different than what they expected. In most cases it's not as good. I'm sure sometimes you're gonna get something you're gonna get more than you expected but the reality of that is is that it's maybe one in a hundred compared to the other scenario and we've all had that happen to us. Okay so uh, those problems that he was having there's not a ton that can be done about it. He was actually getting in there he was changing the listings trying his best to work with Amazon but he wasn't able to get this issue resolved. He would go and he would change the picture and then Amazon would come through and change it back or another seller would jump in and they would change it back as well. It doesn't have the same fluidity that eBay has when it comes to being able to control and maintain what's happening with your page. So where do I see Amazon going forward with this? I think that Amazon is going to have to take a very similar approach to what YouTube is doing as far as making sure that their top producers within their platform have the means to be able to get in touch with people that can actually make positive change. He The biggest thing he was talking about is that he had his problems and it wasn't as if people weren't listening. It's the people that were listening didn't have the power to do anything about it. And that's a very big problem to have. It, you know, you, it's it's like going to a mechanic and saying, you know, hey, my, my car won't start. And they're like, okay, I understand your car won't start. And, and then what? It's like, it's like we hear the problem. It's like, I, I'd love to be able to fix it. I mean, I understand that this is a place where you go to get things fixed, but I can't fix it for you. I mean, I, I get what needs to happen, but I can't do that for you. So not only was he having those issues, he was having items disappear as well. And we're not just talking a few. He was having hundreds of items disappear. So this is part of why I wanted to talk about this today is I was going to tell everyone who is selling on Amazon, you know, and I'm not saying that these problems are going to directly affect you, but you definitely want to make sure that you have your database of all your items that you have in FBA and might as well for MF at, while you're thinking about it, but you should have your database backed up probably once a month. I, and I understand that it might take a little bit of time if you don't have the ability to download a CSV file or download a spreadsheet. I'm not sure if those backend tools are there or available, but it's not too terribly difficult to get a screen capture or possibly even do a screen record as you flip through your inventory. Once a month, I mean, it shouldn't take you more than about five minutes to get done, but it's no different than double checking and making sure your car is locked before you go into a grocery store. So if you have the ability, try and get some type of archive of what you have in Amazon, because if you logged into your Amazon tomorrow and all of your items were missing, what proof do you have that you ever sent anything into them? Okay, yeah, sure, you might have shipping invoices, you know, you might have, you know, scraps of paper from when you put labels on items. But if you don't have any concrete evidence that items were attached to your account, it's you versus Amazon in a he said, she said type scenario. And nobody wants that to happen. 
Uh, some of the other issues that this gentleman was having was getting UPC exemptions. I had this same exact problem. And believe it or not, I'm still having this problem right now. So I have an item. Uh, it's, a, it's a specific type of figure that I've been sending into Amazon. I've been sending in cases and cases and cases of them. But there's one variety that I can't send in right now. And I scan the barcode. And you know what the problem is? That barcode is no longer registered through GS1 with that person. So I'm like, okay, well... I guess I'm going to have to make my own or get my own barcode and make my own listing. So I go buy some barcodes and then I try and scan it in, and try and get it going. And I'm blocked. I'm told, nope, you can't do that. And I call in and it's like, oh yeah, that barcode isn't registered with you. I'm like, what do you mean registered with me? I'm like, I own the barcode. And they say, no, it's not under your name. We're looking at the GS1 database. It's not your barcode. It's someone else's barcode. And because it's someone else's barcode, we can't allow you to add it to Amazon. I'm like, well... Technically speaking, every barcode is somebody else's barcode. I mean, you know I mean, except for people who are doing like true private label, but I'm like, this is a traditional item. And I'm like, I can show you that, that this is the item and that, um, you know, that, that original barcode is just no longer good anymore. And they say, well, sorry, we can't help you with that. You have to fill out all of these forms. And there was a lot of forms. You have to fill out all these forms. You have to get them sent in. And then I, I did all that. I filled the forms. I attached the pictures. I sent it in. And then they kicked me back an email and they're like, okay, we need you to do more. Oh. What more do you need? Like, we need more pictures. We need you to get a write-up. We need something from the manufacturer saying that they don't own this barcode anymore. And I'll just be transparent. It's Disney, okay? How the hell am I supposed to, excuse my language, how the heck am I supposed to contact Disney and have them provide me with something for an item 12 years ago to say that they don't own that item or they don't have that barcode anymore? And then there's the other route of going full-on private label with an item that isn't a private label item. And then now I'm going to have to get uh, my own barcodes and barcodes are not cheap. If you want to make an account at GS1, it's like a hundred dollars. And don't get me wrong, that specific skew and you know and the quantity that I have in it, I'm gonna make money on it if I choose to do that. But I really shouldn't have to. Okay. So the biggest problem with Amazon right now is there isn't a direct line of communication in the way that most people want it. Um, we want to be able to pick up the phone and um, I guess have somebody answer that can do things and does actually care about the sellers uh, because sellers they are starting to look for other avenues to get rid of stuff. And I'm not saying Amazon's gonna, gonna die or they're gonna get crushed or, you know, but I mean, if big time sellers with massive inventory are leaving the platform, it's a little bit of a red flag for me. Um, and for him with his private stock, the stuff that he was working with, he was even getting items directly from IBM, Lenovo, uh, Toshiba. He was getting items that weren't available to the general public. So we're talking like very specific replacement components he was giving, given the clearance to be actually be able to go through and sell these items. And he was listing these items up with his own photos. Other people were coming in, changing the photos, and then trying to sell the same exact item. I don't know, guys. There's, there's a bunch of, uh, bunch of stuff going on with that. Any questions on that topic before I move on to the next one? The next one's going to be a little bit of a fun one here, okay? Um, we, we got some... Got something interesting going on. And with the power of technology, I hope you guys are ready for this, we're going to watch a video together. eBay recently announced that they want to enhance the shopping experience. Okay, What's better than going on your mobile phone, going on your computer, and buying something off of eBay? Looking like an absolute ass and doing it in public with a pair of goggles strapped to your face. I hope you guys are ready for this. This is going to be really fun. Okay, So <laughs> I got the video all queued up. Okay, we're going to be watching it right now. Let me get this toggled over. I'm going to restart this video. I, I think that you guys are going to be able to hear it. I'll turn it up a little bit if need be. see what I saw? Whoa! Okay, you guys ready for it? Here we go. I am shopping on eBay. This is the this is the future that we're looking for, right? 
what the heck is this? How is this even possible? Okay, I understand, like I said, eBay is grasping at straws here to try and stay relevant. And they're trying to be like hip and edgy and fun and have a good time. But who thought that this was a good idea? They need to hire someone like me. I could, I could literally come up with a better idea just instantly. Who wants to do this? Have, have you ever been at a mall? Been like out shopping in the public? You got your friends around and said, you know what would make this experience even better? I think if I put a VR headset on and walked around in public like a jackass and bought items on eBay, now we're talking. That's what I want. It just makes no sense to me at all. Makes no sense. Any, any, <laughs> anyone got any comments on that and just how ridiculous that is? Okay, guys. Ashley June says, what the heck? Yep, I am right there with you on that one. It's absurd. Yeah. Okay, we got one more thing. That I wonder if this has to do with the rumors from eBay Open that you need to photograph on a white background because people were supposed to be able to see photograph stuff in real life and it would pop up on eBay. Yeah, you know, I had heard rumors about that. I think I actually heard about that in group chat is that we were supposed to start using white backgrounds. And I remember the same amount of fear that I felt right then was the same level of fear when I was told that we had to add UPCs to every single one of our items. It was pretty horrifying, because I'll tell you right now, like if I have to go through and retake pictures of like eight or 900 items, I would probably close my store and yard sale everything. And I would just start from scratch, because I'm not gonna go through and, and, and fiddle with that over again. I would just say, screw it, start over. Uh, because you can't implement stuff. And then if you do implement something like that, you have to incentivize the seller. If it's a situation where it's mandatory and we absolutely have to do it, you have to give us some, some credit or some incentive. You have to say, we'll give you 30 cents an item to, to go through and change everything out. But I could see why that would be a thing. But then again, at the same time, I mean, it's not too difficult to stencil stuff out. I mean, obviously, like, I'm cut out. But And there's a green screen behind me, and I was able to get all of this stuff going on. So, I mean, they might be able to have the technology to kind of trace an item out. But in certain instances, I don't know. It, it's kind of hard to ponder on because it's such a ridiculous idea. It's such an absurd notion to, to, to go shopping like that. I don't know. I, I, couldn't, I couldn't be seen in public doing something like that, and I couldn't be seen in public with somebody doing something like that. So... Next topic up on the docket for me, I had an issue with long-term storage fees. Um, if you guys didn't realize long-term storage fees hit yesterday, Valentine's Day, happy Valentine's Day to everyone out there. Uh, my LTF fees were through the freaking roof. Why? Because of that same exact Disney item. So it turned out that an item that I had, which was uh, roughly this big, okay? About this big in size. I had 24 of these units at the warehouse. Guess how much my three-year projection for fees was, okay? Think, of, think about an absurd number. For, for 24 of these, just, just sitting on a shelf out there, my three-year projection, $1,600 in fees, okay? I looked at my, uh, my first assessment, which is where they charge you, I believe, 10 or 11 cents per item, or excuse me, 10 or 11 cents per square foot on your items. And they were looking to charge me $230 for 24 of those. And then my next one was going to be uh, closer to uh, $600 for the same thing. If you haven't done it yet, I would recommend going through and looking at your fees and seeing how much they're charging you on individual items. This was obviously a glitch. And I reached out to them right away and I told them what was going on. They said, you know what they told me? They're like, hey, <laughs> we hear your problem. There's nothing we can do about it today. And I'm like, well, when can we do something about it? They're like, well, after we charge you, excuse me? They're like, yes, we have to charge you first, but we can notate the account and somebody is gonna go to the warehouse and they're gonna manually remeasure your item. We have the wrong size for your item if that's the situation. And then we're gonna have to credit you back on the back end. So Amazon took $230 out and obviously I'm gonna get it back. I get that. I'm gonna get that money back. But yeah, they yanked it out anyways, and then I'll get the reimbursement later because they had that item marked as one foot by one foot instead of two and a half inches by two and a half inches. So, guys, we are coming up to 
4.53 Pacific time right now. I think I went over everything that I wanted to go over today. That was a lot of stuff. I hope you guys had fun. I'm gonna. Uh, I'm definitely gonna be taking questions if anyone has any. Now's a great time. I noticed that comment earlier mentioning that you thought that these golfs or these uh, these gloves were golf cl uh, gloves. I don't know. I'm not really feeling that. I'm thinking that these are more um, possibly. I don't know. They're hyper insulated. So I'm thinking that maybe they're. Yeah, they can't be golf gloves because they're like mitts, right? I thought that these might be for snowboarding. That's what I I thought. They are aw awfully firm. Let's, I don't know. Let's see if we can find some information real quick. If you guys have any questions, drop them in the comments. We're going to be looking for some information real quick on these gloves and see what we can find out. Look at all these idiots wearing their augmented reality stuff. Gosh. I just want to look at this again. I just want to... Oh, my God. Look at this guy. Who does this? Was he? It looks like he's at like a pier or a marina or something like that. Here, let me turn this down a little bit. <laughs> Look at this guy. He's he's inside of what appears to be like a waiting area of an olive garden. Okay. Look at this person. Beautiful view of New York in the background. I think that's New York. Or is that uh, maybe Pittsburgh? I, can, I don't know. Beautiful water view over here. Okay. Staring into a cardboard box. Okay. Oh, okay. We got her over the bridge. Oh, what is this? Is this Australia? I, I'm having a hard time. It's an oven mitt. Is it really an oven mitt? Why would I have two of them? Okay, and then where is this guy? This guy looks like he might be in Taipei. He also looks like that one, um, you guys know who I'm talking about. I can't remember his name. But mitten style. Okay, let's see what they're, what they're showing here. Okay, we got vacuums, cell phones, cord. What is this? It says, choose Chi Chi. What does that even mean? Oh my God, this is horrible. They got a they got a lady here who uh, needs crutches to walk and she's sitting out here on the beach doing her eBay shopping through an Oculus Rift right now. God. Look at this. Yep, give me a handful of whatever, uh, whatever you're selling right now. I just can't, I can't imagine this. Like all these other people are having a great time out right now and I wanna stare into my piece of cardboard that says eBay on the front of it. What does O-O-A-K stand for? It's one of a kind, I think. Oh, yeah, nice. Okay, so what we're, we're going to look for some information on these gloves real quick, okay? Um, B-R-T-N glove. So my original uh, search had me looking on eBay. I didn't do any Google searches. If anyone finds any information on those... Um, any information on those uh, Fanta bottles, let me know. That'd be great. Accessories. Look at this. Gloves and mittens. Oh, I think BRTN stands for Burton. Okay, let's uh, try this. Yep, I bet you that's Burton's. Gloves. 776 results. Price plus shipping lowest now. Buy it now format. Okay, so we are going to see if we can quickly find a comp that's similar to this. Like I said, mine aren't in the best of condition, but they are exceptionally unique. They have a very uh, NASA vibe to them. I'm sure you guys caught that as well, the way the logo is. You think we should just punch NASA in the search? Actually, we can refine it down with the, um, let's go mitten. Can you show the tags again? Yes, I can. This one. So I can't see myself when I'm on this screen. So if I'm like way off, I apologize. And uh, as I'm watching the stream back, I have a 12 second delay, so I can't see everything in real time either. Oh, well, it looks like I got it right. Okay. MB combo unmit. Oh, it says lost in space. Oh, there we go. Thank you, Carolee. 
So we're going to do, uh, we're going to take Mithin out of the search and we're just going to do Burke and Lost in Space. Uh, we're going to do all listings um, because we're just trying to find a comp right now. So now we're going to go completed. So it, it doesn't look like there's any active or completed listings on it. So at least we have uh, some more information now. Burton lost in space. Let's see if this is a uh, something that's commonly looked up. Just so you guys know, I am on Google Images right now, and I am not responsible for what scrolls up on this search term, Burton lost in space. So if you have children watching, just bear in mind that there might be some random images that are not uh, safe for the kiddos to see. That's kind of cool. A little Burton space jacket. Okay, yeah, they're definitely vintage gloves. Um, I, I don't think they're like super, super vintage, but I'd probably say at least 10, 15 years old. I know what you're probably thinking. You're like, oh, you know, you're a kid calling things 10 years old, vintage, making me feel old. Okay. Yeah, they don't seem to have a date on them. Yeah. Okay, well, we got that. We got that solved. Da, da, da. Da, da, da. So yeah. Um, oh yeah, I was going to talk about Patreon. Yeah, I'm going to be making some changes to the Patreon page here over the next uh, week. I really wanted to get them done before the show today, but I was literally scrambling up to the last minute working with Rachel to try and get this all ready to go. Uh, we've been working together for probably the past four days now, and I, I'm so thankful to her. Um, we, we actually built a second Facebook page so we could test the live stream, test the functionality, um, just be able to get everything to uh, work appropriately. Uh, if you guys didn't see the intro, it was pretty rad. I was pretty proud of that project as well, but there was a ton of testing that had to happen uh, to make sure that all the technology was in place to make this work. Um, but yeah, so I didn't get a chance to adjust the Patreon thing because I thought Thursday was tomorrow up until about two and a half hours before the stream started. So there was a lot of little things that needed to get done to, uh, to, to make sure that the stream would be able to go off without a hitch. So for Patreon, we are going to be adding some new stuff. Obviously, the Thursday Reseller Roundup is something that um, we're going to be adding in for patrons. I think we're thinking about doing a, a two and two. Two shows are going to be available to everyone, and then two shows each month are going to be available to patrons only. Um, just try and encourage people to come back. We're going to be coming out with some new price tiers. I would like to be able to do more hands-on training with people, uh, whether that's me flying out or whether that's us doing uh, video chats and stuff like that. So we're going to have new pricing tiers because I really want to expand this model out. I love, love, love being able to showcase items and teach people new stuff. And I want to be able to get further into the knit and grit of how I'm successful within this industry. And I'm not wildly successful. You know, I'm like, I'm a thousand air. Um, but how we can talk about optimizing your location areas, talking about optimizing your listing strategies, optimizing the way you do your warehouse, but just different fun little ways of uh, making more money. She's at her dad's house. Thanks, Carolee. <laughs> but yeah, so we're gonna be we're gonna be making some changes, but it's all it's all good. I'm not gonna be like raising prices on existing patrons. The the fifteen dollar tier is gonna stay the same. For those of you who don't know, it includes group chat, which is a ton of fun. And I guess I didn't realize before, but I do need to clarify. Group chat is a text based um, application within Facebook. So you're using text to be able to communicate with other people. It's not a like a live phone call. We do do some live stuff from time to time in there, <clears throat> but it's not super, super active. So um, one of the other things I want to add into Patreon is like one good serious training module each month and one good serious picking video each month. I realize that when I try and go too hard and put too much content out too fast, it really lowers the quality of the content and it lowers the amount of fun I'm having. So that's what we're gonna aim for. We're gonna aim for four live streams per month. We're gonna aim for one um, live, or not not live, but like actual out in the field picking. Um, so if you wanna go picking with me, let me know. And then we're gonna aim for one serious training video. And the topic of the training video, I'd like the patrons to be able to pick that each month and it can be anything you wanna learn more about. If it's something that I don't even know that well myself, like say Vero, for instance, I will take the time, tear down the topic in, in complete completeness, 
create a video, and I'm going to make it exclusive for the patrons every single month. So that's my big plan for 2018 is to scale Patreon way up. If you're already an existing patron, I'm, I'll let you know by next week when the new tiers are out. You can take a peek at them and hopefully consider upgrading, consider looking into some of the newer options uh, because our, our goal is to get this production further. Um, I want to be able to do live interviews. I want to be able to tear down the set and take it with me. I want to be able to go like out to Oregon and do some training out there, go out to Washington, do some picking out there, and be able to continue to keep this going week after week. So um, with that being said, if there's no questions, I definitely want to thank all of the patrons, and again, Rachel, but all of the patrons as a whole for making this program available. If you missed the intro, you know what? Hey, I'll tell you what. We're going to show that. We're going to show that intro when we're. It's such a cool intro. I worked so hard on getting this put together here. We're going to show that one more time, real quick. God, you guys, if you guys missed it, you've really missed out on this. Look how cool this is. I'll even get, I'll even get out of the way here. Look at this intro. Those of you who don't know, okay, that is original music that was produced specifically for this intro. Okay, this this isn't um, this was done by Christopher. Let me get his name back on screen so he can get some of that credit. If you guys need original music done, Christopher Schroeder is on my page, and you can add him. Okay, and uh, talk with him about his music work. He makes original music, and it's really, really good stuff. He does. He did the waiting room music, and he also did the um, the intro music for this show. So if you want to get some work done by him, I strongly recommend you reach out to him. He is on my friends list. If you are watching and I'm not on your friends list yet, please make sure you send me your request after the show. But yeah. Um, thank you so much for watching, guys. It's been a fun hour, and I look forward to seeing you guys uh, next Thursday as well. So thank you so much again for all of uh, your support, your patronage, your time, and your attention. And remember, if you don't make that money, someone else will. Thank you.